Friday, June 16th. It's a cold and dreary morning in St. John's, Newfoundland. As the research ship Polar Prince gets ready for a voyage nearly 400 miles off the coast of Canada to the final resting site of the RMS Titanic. It's a place as remote and barren as the moon where less than 300 people have ever dared to go. It's 13,000 feet deep where the pressure is so great it's like having a herd of elephants on your shoulders. A ticket on the expedition costs you a quarter of a million dollars, but that's nothing for the crew. Stockton Rush, CEO of Ocean Gate and pilot of the Titan submarine, is worth 12 million. He's accompanied by Pakistani businessman Shahzada Dawood and his 19-year-old son Suleiman. He is worth 350 million dollars. Also on board is Hamish Harding, a British entrepreneur, explorer, and pilot worth an estimated $1 billion. The final member of the crew is Paul Henry Nargiolet, a Titanic expert from France with an estimated net worth of around $1.5 billion. Altogether, the crew is worth nearly $3 billion. Due to bad Newfoundland weather, this was likely to be the first and only manned expedition to the Titanic in 2023. Two days later, on June 18th, the dive operation begins at 9 o'clock ADT. The Titan submarine is bolted shut. It's cramped, not enough room to stand up, and only room for one person to stretch their legs at a time. The bathroom is a thin tube behind a curtain, and the sub is operated by a decade-old Mad Cats controller. No, seriously. And it's all run with this game controller and these touch screens. So if you want to go forward, you press forward. If you want to go back, you go back turn left, turn right, go down, go up, and it's Bluetooth, so I can hand it to anybody, and it's meant for a 16-year-old to throw it around. And it's meant for a 16-year-old to throw it around. The dive started off great. The Titan made radio contact with the surface every 15 minutes. But an hour and a half into the dive, suddenly, the Titan went silent. Unfortunately for the crew of the Titan, the Polar Prince didn't call for help until almost nine hours later, giving themselves enough time to watch the entire Godfather trilogy. Soon enough, the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Navy, and Canadian Coast Guard were all launching search and rescue missions. Tragically, they still have not been able to locate the sub. With the search area larger than Connecticut, finding something as small as the Titan submersible is the ultimate needle in a haystack. However, on Tuesday at 2 o'clock, a Canadian PA Poseidon heard tapping noises every 30 minutes. I've seen a lot of posts on Twitter where people are welcoming this, like they're happy to see these billionaires in such a tragic situation. Um, but I think, you, especially for that poor 19-year-old kid on there, you got to be praying that they make it home safe. And I think at the end of the day, we all want them to make it back to the surface with enough oxygen and back to see their families. Unfortunately, as each minute passes, they're running out of time. And by tomorrow morning, they'll be out of oxygen, which leads us to another possibility. If we're unable to find those trapped inside the Titan submarine, then they face unimaginable horrors of the deep sea Hungry mouths, ravenous appetites, cold, dark water. Doomed to spend the rest of eternity in the alien world of the abyss, much like those who perished on the Titanic a hundred years before. Uncomfortable, squashed in, hunched over, spending their last minutes regretting their journey to the depths. Perhaps it truly is best to let sleeping dogs lie.